It's really unsettling to think that a band can take several years to work on an album, and it still turns out to be 17 Shades of Horrible anyway. <sighs> what it do, friends? Welcome back to the channel, and welcome to this album review. It's time to talk about your welcome for the seventh studio album by pop-punk metalcore hybrid band A Day to Remember. This is the follow-up to 2016's Bad Vibrations, and it's their first album on Fueled by Ramen, the notorious record label where bands' entire stylistic identities go to die. Unless, of course, you're Paramore or Panic of the Disco, and you've been on the label since the Nixon administration, and you might have a little bit of seniority, or a band like All Time Low that originally floundered with 2017's Last Young Renegade, but then bounced back with Wake Up Sunshine last year, and maybe tried to put to bed the notion that uh, Feel by Ramen is where a band's entire st uh, sound and style just becomes a vapid shell of its former self. A Data Remember is reaffirming those spe uh, those fears uh, real quick. So, and considering I'm, I gotta get this out of the way, I'm already not a big fan of them. I think A Data Remember are one of the most criminally overrated bands of all time. They got some good songs. Common Courtesy from 2013 was a good album. I like the song Right Back At It Again. It was a good radio rock tune. Uh, Mr. Highway was great with that iconic breakdown. I mean, they got some good stuff, but technically, in terms of the musicality, it really is just standard by-the-buck stuff. I mean, and considering we're in pop-punk, such a generic genre anyway, where previous bands like Yellow Card or Simple Plan might have been uh, not derided, but at the very least, it might have been pointed out that those bands might sound kind of basic in terms of the musicality. Though, in Yellow Card's case, I would definitely shy away from that because, I mean, they added some diversity with Sean Mackin on violin and stuff. So, I mean, it's a pretty generic genre anyway. So, to be g generic in a generic genre speaks volumes. So, I was already not privy to what they were selling, but now this new album just kicks that into overdrive real quick so we talked about brick wall a few months ago whenever that was released as a single i was not a fan of the slightest with its disjointed tempo and desperate attempt uh, to try to do different things almost as, as it went along as if to admit that it was a pile of doo-doo and wanted to salvage itself in real time uh jeremy mckinnon's vocals were just really laughable there just like they were on lead off single degenerates that track is just so gimmicky sort of playing to the band's desired persona, but the output doesn't match because it's so watered down. Mind Reader nearly scales the summit to get where it needs to be with some catchy riffs on the intro, but the production just reeks of the band's most misguided pop tendencies. I don't feel like I'm listening to an A Day to Remember album. It sounds like a random bloke on the top 40 trying to randomly add live instruments. Last Chance to Dance glides in on some ominous synths and blistering riffs. It kind of gave me some get light, get scared vibes. I got kind of excited. But those atrocious fry screams came in. <sighs> Jeremy, this is in 2011. Leave old of mice and men's silly shtick in the past where it belongs. And then when he isn't incoherently babbling, he's trying to go a slight octave above with his cleans. And you can tell it's not in his wheelhouse because it's, it's drenched in so much auto tune and monotonous production. Oh boy, high diving wasted no time solidifying its niche as soon to be outdated retail store fodder. This is the exact brand of pop music you hear as you attempt to snag some jeans at 40% off at American Eagle. Jeremy tries to talk, saying at different points, and the execution is just sickening. I couldn't even laugh and allow myself to have fun at the song's expense. It's that big of an offender. And lyrically, it's straight out of Disney with its childish summertime imagery, and it's less than by the book's combo of reverb vocals, synths, acoustic guitar, snap tracks. Talk about embracing all of the worst conventions of the format by choice and thinking that you're doing something right. Big yikes. <sighs> Looks like hell sounds like a bad Linkin Park ripoff, and the vocals, <sighs> Jesus Christ. Jeremy McKinnon is whiter than Casper's taint, and you can hear it in his vocal tonality. It's like he was trying to sound as white as possible, but by the time we get to the one minute mark, I mean, his voice is already drowning and sagging under the weight of all the production, all the electronic bells and whistles and noises around him. And then Viva La Mexico is the most juvenile serving lyrically. They really went, went there and tried to hijack the simple plan shtick of beer-soaked party anthems, even though I did remember themselves, in the case of Jeremy at least. These guys are coming up on their 40s themselves. Like, midlife crisis is not a good look in this genre. <laughs> 
and then we get to re-entry. Uh, now we're going for up-tempo pop tune for the end credits of a big studio blockbuster. I gotta give it to this man. Every cl cliche, every stereotype, every commercial avenue you could possibly explore and make a mockery of, they went for it and checked all those boxes in just one album. I mean... <laughs> And then we get to Everything We Need, which closes the album. It's a blatant ripoff of Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day. Go listen to the riffs and the chanted vocals in the intro and tell me you don't hear it. But I guess that's the grand finale. A ripoff of a better, more respected band and some silly, some extra silly twangy vocals from Jeremy to close things out. And I got to tell you, I'm clocking out, man. This album blows. All the worst pop tendencies. Such watered-down, derivative, nonsense, meandering dribble. I mean... <sighs> The live instrumental doesn't do anything for me. The screams sound so tired and hoarse and like they're definitely showing their age in the same vein as other bands like Architects, which just, they just flopped with their most recent album. And the Amity Affliction and other bands that come to mind that have really, uh, in, at least in the metalcore scene, have really devolved and uh, I, I, I don't buy it. And I'm, I'm glad to see at least that all... A lot, a lot of other people are taking note of how bad this album is because I was actually expecting it to be a lot more divided, like between people who enjoy it, people who don't. I'm actually, I'm actually seeing a lot more people, thankfully, who also do not enjoy this album. I mean, oh, this album, uh, stay away for your own health. You're welcome. By Data Remember gets a big fat zero out of five. Not having it. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, smash the like button. Leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and we'll see you again soon.